modern hybrid studios combine analog and digital production techniques. As fun as hybrid studios are, they require a seamless workflow between analog and digital hardware. But this constant back and forth can create some problems. That's why I would like to talk to you in this video about level matching. One of the reasons why switching between analog and digital recording methods can be challenging at times are the different level definitions used in audio technology. This can lead to situations where the output level from your analog source is too high, causing the input of your interface to clip, although you haven't applied any amplification. Another phenomenon is overdriving the input of an analog device with your interface output signal. Despite the signal level being moderate and neither clipping in your DAW nor total mix effects. Fortunately, all these problems can be avoided by understanding some basic audio level principles. Analog levels are usually measured in voltage ratios, such as dBU, decibel unloaded, or dBV, decibel voltage. Since both dBU and dBV describe positive and negative voltage changes, they are expressed in so-called root mean square levels, or in short, RMS levels. This is in contrast to peak levels or peak-to-peak -peak levels. Over the past decades, two internationally accepted standards have been used in the music industry. Plus 4 dBU for professional equipment, which is often referred to as studio level, and minus 10 dBV for home electronics widely regarded as consumer level. This may sound like an insignificant detail, but to mix these standards up can have huge negative effects on your recording. Because plus 4 dBU studio level is in fact about 12 dB higher than minus 10 dBV consumer level. And remember, this difference is an average RMS level. Peak levels can be even 20 dB or more above the stated average level. To make life easier, both standards have been implemented in every RME interface and can be selected in the channel settings if necessary. This will give you the best performance in every situation and for every analog source. Once we switch over to the digital side, audio is depicted as a string of zeros and ones. Because of this binary nature, we cannot use analog levels such as dBU to express digital levels. Instead, we use something called decibels relative to full scale, or in short, dBFS levels, which have a maximum peak level and a fixed scale. Therefore, 0 dBFS is the maximum level that can be achieved in a digital system such as a DAW or software plugin. Everything above 0 dBFS exceeds the clipping point, thus causing an overload, or in other words, a clipped signal. It is therefore important to stay below 0 dBFS and give your digital signals sufficient headroom. So your software programs, including Total Mix FX, are showing you digital dBFS values, while on the other hand, your analog equipment is showing you analog levels. I think by now we all know what the problem is. Analog and digital levels are simply not the same. And to mess these standards up can have huge effects on your production workflow. As you remember, dBU indicate voltage ratios in RMS levels, while dBFS have a fixed scale and state peak levels. Therefore, it is not possible to compare both levels against each other. Put simply, 0 dBU are not 0 dBFS and the other way around. Hence, there is no general formula or method to convert dBU into dBFS and vice versa. There exists, however, a simple yet effective solution for this problem. Since the input and output level of a digital signal is defined by the operating level of the converter, 
converting DBU to DBFS is possible when a reference point is established. RME interfaces work with so-called reference levels as a point of reference, both for the input and output of the ADDA converter. These reference levels will not only give you the exact DBU value when reaching 0 dBFS in your DAW or total mix effects, but also available headroom in relation to the international analog studio level. For the analog inputs, we have three reference levels available low gain, plus 4 dBU, and minus 10 dBV. With low gain engaged, 0 dBFS in total mix effects correspond to plus 19 dBU for the input channel, which gives you a headroom of 15 dB compared to studio level. With plus 4 dBU engaged, 0 dBFS in total mix effects correspond to plus 13 dBU for the input channel, which gives you a headroom of 9 dB compared to studio level. With minus 10 dBV engaged, 0 dBFS in total mix effects correspond to plus 2 dBV for the input channel, which gives you a headroom of 12 dB compared to studio level. If your RME interface doesn't have this option, a reference level of minus 10 dBV can be set by using plus 4 dBU and adding 9 dB of gain with the gain knob in the total mix effects channel settings. For the analog outputs, we have three reference levels available. High gain, plus 4 dBU and minus 10 dBV. With high gain engaged, 0 dBFS in total mix effects correspond to plus 19 dBU for the output channel, which gives you a headroom of 15 dB compared to studio level. With plus 4 dBU engaged, 0 dBFS in total mix effects correspond to plus 13 dBU for the output channel, which gives you a headroom of 9 dB compared to studio level. With minus 10 dBV engaged, 0 dBFS in total mix effects correspond to plus 2 dBV for the output channel, which gives you a headroom of 12 dB compared to studio level. These reference levels are found in all RME devices. They are fully compatible to each other, but may vary in some cases. Check your manual for further details. Now that we have everything we need, it is time to put our newly gained knowledge into practice. I have set up a UFX Plus, which is connected to an X filter from Illusia via input and output channels 3 and 4 over TRS cables. The X filter is a stereo analog equalizer with four bands that can add up up to plus 16 dB of gain per band. With a maximum input and output level of plus 21 dBU, it is wise to use moderate levels when going into the X filter. Let us imagine we send out an audio signal from our DAW that reaches 0 dBFS. With high gain engaged, Outputs 3 and 4 would send out an analog signal with an average of plus 19 dBU into the X filter. In theory, this would mean that you would only have around plus 2 dB of headroom before overdriving the output stage of the X filter. In practice, however, it's unlikely that the selected frequency band contains that much energy. But keep in mind that most equalizers, like the X filter, use a serial design. Therefore, all applied gain changes will add up. Instead of using the full power of the UFX Plus, we set the reference level for output 3 and 4 to plus 4 dBU, resulting in at least plus 8 dB of headroom. So plenty enough leeway for boosting certain frequencies. For the analog input of the UFX Plus, on the other hand, we selected the low gain reference level to have a maximum input level of plus 19 dBU. Remember, the X filter can reach up to plus 21 dBU when set to maximum. This surpasses the analog input of the UFX Plus by 2 dB, but is in practice negligible, because it's rare to add this much of EQ gain to a signal. But if you want to be completely on the safe side, you could incorporate an RME converter into your setup that could handle up to plus 24 dBU, like the ADI2 Pro FS 
or the M16 10 Pro. Last but not least, all signals can be monitored in Total Mix FX or DigiCheck NG. Clipping is now a thing of the past. All right, I hope this video gave you a profound understanding of how you can match your analog and digital levels with your RME interface. If you have any more questions, as always, write them down in the comment section below. And I see you in the next video.